is the moment of the stream, the first moment where I hope everything is working and I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I have to check my levels. Um, I, I did. I did check my levels earlier. Um, little, little sound check, little tech check. And uh, things look to be good. Um, I got a new microphone. Eric got me a new microphone. It's beautiful. I could show it to you. Yeah, I will. I mean, well, no. <laughs> not only do I, I mean, it's not fragile. I think it's like titanium or something, but um, I don't like cords. I'm, I'm a person who I just, mm, cords everywhere. It bothers me. Maybe it bothers you. It's just, I don't know. Cords are not beautiful. There's, there's nothing about them that's attractive, really. So I try to hide them away, you know, tuck them away as best I can. And so I've wrapped the cord of the microphone, you know, around the base of the microphone. And it's, so if I move it, you know, it's just, it's, everything's going to fall apart, literally. <laughs> so let's see. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to say hi to you. If you are new here, then you are welcome here. And um, I hope you'll stay. And let's see, I'm going down here. I'm doing this. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll wait a little bit. Just do some, do some chit chat while we're um, waiting for folks to get in the stream. Um, some of you are here and I hope you'll chat. Um, let me get to the chat. Oh, hey, Molly. Hi, Molly, the librarian. Molly, you having a librarian around is, it's a good thing. Like it's always a good thing, especially if it's a librarian who makes quilts. Um, I want to know your story. Like, what's your story? Where do you live? You may have said so. Um, I'm feeling very bad because I know Caroline, I know by her screen name, White Timber Cottage, but there are a few people that I, that are part of the crew and I cannot put the name to the screen name, you know, and it's annoying because I think I should know that by now. There's a lot of stuff going on. Kate, Kate and Pepper. Okay. SJ Pepper, SJ Pepper. I was thinking of you actually just now. I keep not thinking of your real name and maybe, I mean, I like calling you SJ or Pepper depending on the moment, but you know, if you don't like that, it's the least I can do to, you know, the first original crew of people who have come on this journey, you know, we're going to have like, you know, some kind of party at some point, you know, to be like, we were there at the start when Mary was, I don't know what I was, I think I was, I don't know. I was, I was pretty unsure of myself and I still, I still, you know, I'm just learning so much about this, but, um, but I mean, anybody who came along on the very, very first streams, you know, I think we should have a margarita together at some point. Um, so Wisconsin, Sue Fisher, hi, Sue Fisher, you might be new. I don't know if that's true. If you've been here before, uh, welcome back. Um, more people are coming now, which is amazing. And that's what we all want to have happen because the more people that are here uh, watching the Twitch stream, engaging in the Twitch stream, the better it gets. That's how I feel about it. Um, because you all can contribute your ideas and your thoughts, um, as we go on an adventure, every single time is an adventure. People who have been coming here from the start um, have have seen that. Carol, Carol's in the house. Carol, Carol Hempel. Um, so yeah, I mean, Carol knows, you know, um, Molly knows, SJ knows that we start with a quilt or we start with something that came up in the last stream uh, that we didn't get to. And we just sort of, go from there. I mean, we let a quilt be our guide through history, through quilts and culture. We were looking at celebrities a couple streams ago that led into, I mean, oh, and this is exciting. So, so if you go back, you can go back and watch the streams, um, on my Twitch channel, they stay up there, but they only stay up there for 60 days. I don't know. But today, actually yesterday and today I have been working long, long hours, really yesterday and today to get all of my, my Twitch videos on YouTube. So slowly, but surely all of the Twitch streams that I've done, except for the first three, which let's be honest, a, no one saw <laughs> and B, they just don't need to exist. I even took them down off my Twitch channel because they just, I mean, it was me like literally going, okay, now 
okay, how does this work? So those don't have to be have to be there. But every other stream, every, you know, subsequent stream, I think there's like 12 or something now. I, I uploaded them to YouTube and I made sure the descriptions were there and I made fancy thumbnails. Let me show you this. Hey, Dana. What's up? Quilty Nancy. I love this. I love this. Good evening, everyone. It's 10. It's 10 o'clock in London. So that's why I'm like, I did my hair, I took a shower, I put on lipstick, and I almost wore a fancy outfit because it's Saturday night, but then <laughs> I didn't. Um, anyway, I made cool thumbnails for all my videos because I finally am learning how to do the basics of internet video content, which is make cool thumbnails. So let me show you, um, let me show you those thumbnails. So, so I was making thumbnails and I was putting descriptions together and check this out check this out so that's my youtube channel look at this look okay look at my thumbnails before uh not great um some of them don't have thumbnails at all but look at these these are our twitch streams y'all you see you hover over it and you see the stream so it's gonna be um all of, they're all gonna be there you know and I just uploaded them like as I was getting ready um, to to come on. So, you know, no views on that video. Hopefully that'll change. Maybe not. Maybe it won't. That's OK. Um, hey, the Palumbo. Excellent. The gang's all here. Um, excellent. Excellent. So, yeah. Anyway, so some people I think are maybe a little bit, you know, unsure about Twitch. They're like, well, I don't really know what this is about but they're super into YouTube, obviously, because YouTube is kind of the standard for video content, and we know that. So maybe they'll say, oh, quilts and fashion, what's that about? Or um, the AIDS quilt documentary, let's let's take a look at this. And they'll see what this Twitch thing is about, and they'll go, oh, I really want to be there when it's live, because this is really fun. So as I keep saying, you know, as this thing goes along, I'm going to, you know, make it better and make it work differently and and we can really have fun with the platform and this was one of the first steps you know I had to get all the stuff I've done so far onto YouTube and there's still a few more left to go but anyway so that is what I did today um what did you do today what's going on hey Dana's here oh wait I said I said hi to Dana so Natalie it's so Natalie it's Natalie it's so Natalie it's so Natalie I love your name um yeah okay great Great, great, great. Ooh, ooh, someone mentioned the Bronte Workshop for Quilt Folk. Well, we're gonna talk about the Bronte Workshop right now. Um, yeah, well, I mean, as soon as I'm done with the intro, which I do partly for the new people, but also to, you know, warm up a little bit. By the way, I do have chips tonight, of course. I learned my lesson last time, the time that I didn't have chips. If you're new here, it's just a thing. I didn't try to make it a thing really I just like to snack um and I'm probably nervous and so I was like well I'm gonna have chips um and maybe I was hungry when I first started you know doing this stuff and I was just hungry so I started eating chips and now I just do that's just like a thing that happens now on uh, on the stream is that I, I eat chips and because it is Saturday night and wherever you are, I encourage you to eat chips as well. It is Saturday night, so I do have a glass of wine tonight. I have chips and wine. And yes, that's that's dinner. I mean, it's it's mostly going to be dinner. Um, okay. Last thing for new for the new people. Um, if you're not familiar with Twitch, here's the scoop. YouTube is great for live streaming. Facebook Live, great. Uh, Instagram Live. Tons of people use it. So why would I do a live streaming show about quilts on Twitch when I didn't even know, I didn't have a Twitch account until like three months ago. And the reason that I'm doing it this way is because Twitch is for live streaming. It is expressly for that. It used to be, well, it still is a huge thing for gamers. People who play video games, they live stream themselves playing video games. They share their screen and people just love watching them play video games. But a few months ago, I saw that like this journalist was doing like, she basically live streamed her research and it was fascinating. I was like, wow, I really love this. I love watching a person who's curious about stuff. She doesn't do it anymore, but 
but I love I loved watching someone go down the rabbit hole, right? Look look for stuff and 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 watch a video and comment on it and stuff. And I thought, well, I I love quilts. I love looking at them, talking about them, learning about the history of them and sharing what I learn with people. And that usually happens when I'm doing guild gigs or speaking at uh, conferences like QuiltCon. And it's just this torrent of like, ah, look what I I learned this thing about quilts, or I don't understand this thing about quilt history, or I didn't know this thing, and this is going to blow your mind. Or I found a quilt, you know, in a painting in Alabama that is, I got to show you this. But the problem with guild talks and conference talks is that, you know, you get like 50 minutes, 5-0, you know, there's just too much content for that. You got to give, you got to give me more time, people. Um, And so Twitch is, is a place where I can do that with you and you can be involved directly in the conversation. And, and it's very, um, yeah, it's very interactive. And the more we do this together, the longer I, you know, stay on the platform and I'm figuring things out. Um, there's more stuff that we can do. Like, I don't know. (laughs) I followed a couple streamers the other day. Like I was watching other streamers, you know, to figure this all out. And I was like, I did subscribe to someone and I don't have subscriptions, not yet. But I also was like, what are cheers and bits and things? I don't really know. I think right now, as you're watching me, you could hit a little button somewhere on your screen and like it'll do something or it'll send something to me. I think it's like a little burst of happiness or something like that. I don't know. But I don't know what what it costs you. I don't know anything about that. But in time, I'll figure it out. And some things won't cost anything, of course. Most things won't cost anything. This stream will always be free. But then subscriptions get you extra stuff. I have to figure out what that stuff is. But it becomes Twitch becomes like a game in a way where like if you if you really love something we're looking at, you can like you can like um, I don't know, like like there's emotes or something like these different emoticons and things you can use. And if enough people do it, then like, I don't know, something happens. (laughs) I don't know, but it's really fun. And YouTube doesn't do that. And um, uh, Instagram doesn't do that. So. That's why we're here and that's what we're going to do. And somebody mentioned, hey, Rhonda, I know I love quilt history, too. And the thing is, the thing is, is that there's not a show about quilt history. You know, there's not a YouTube channel about it. I mean, I've done some and I should do more like actual videos about quilt history. And I I will. But, you know, how cool would it be to watch a show on quilt history, you know, that was like every week? or maybe a few times a week. Um, And this is kind of that. I'm hoping that it fills that gap in the quilt content world. And I feel like quilters haven't had anything new in a while. Like quilt folk, it's pretty new. You know, it was was a new new form factor. It was like, wow, a quilt magazine with no ads and amazing photography, and it's this travel magazine, that was like, wow, this is new. And it was exciting, and it still is exciting. But before that, I mean, you know, the internet really was new for for quilt makers and video tutorials and stuff like that. But it's been a little while since there was something new. And I think live streaming is really, is, is, is coming, you know? Like it's here, if you're here, it's here for you. But live streaming for, for makers and creators, what could be better? Because you could live stream. You, if you're watching this right now, you are like hip with the Twitch. You're twitcher, you're switching. And you know, if you're sewing in your studio, I'm serious. If you want company and it doesn't freak you out to like be live on the internet when you're sewing, there are channels, not a ton of them, but there are channels on Twitch where people are sewing in their studio and they turn on a camera. And you can hang out with someone while they do that. And that's just, it's, this is the world we live in. You know, this is the world we live in. Um, okay. Good, good, good. Nancy. Okay. SJ. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's true. SJ has a very good point. She says quilters haven't had quote unquote quilters haven't had anything new in a while. And she's like, uh, fabric (laughs) quilters have new fabric all the time. And I, 
Yes, this is very true. And I was thinking, oh, see, now here we go. We're off. We're off to the races because I just had an idea about what to look at after we look at this. So that's how it goes. There's very little planning that goes into this before before we start. And that's not because I'm a ne'er-do-well or a slacker. It's because the excitement is to see what happens. Where do we go in the quilt universe tonight, you know, or today? So I just had an idea to talk about reclaimed fabric, reusing fabric in your quilt. Could be cool. I have something to say about that. But first, someone mentioned the Bronte workshop. And if you don't know what that is, well, first of all, I am holding, what am I holding? I'm holding a copy of Wuthering Heights and a copy of Jane Eyre. Why, why, why? And I've read them both. I mean, I read, I read them both. It's been about a month since I read Wuthering Heights and about two months since I read Jane Eyre. And I'm doing that. The short answer is that Jenny Smith and I, and we're gonna watch a little video, a little video preview about this whole thing. Um, uh, we are, um, <laughs> we are, um, we're doing a, a workshop, an online workshop with a live streaming component um, on October 16th and 17th. So it's online. It's all online. Um, through Quilt Folk, we're doing it with Quilt Folk. It's a Quilt Folk project. Jenny Smith came to me and we're going to watch the video about it. Jenny Smith came to me and Mike McCormick at Quilt Folk and she's like, did you know that the Bronte sisters made a quilt? I ask you, did you know the Bronte sisters? As in Emily, Charlotte, Anne, and oh no, what's the other one? What's the other one? They did. They made a quilt. You're going to see it in just a second. So, uh, um, okay. So I won't say anything else. I won't say anything else. And then I need to talk about about the books. Have you read Jane Eyre? Have you read Wuthering Heights? Have you read them lately? Because if you haven't, you need to. Let's watch this video. I had it queued up. Now I don't. Jenny Smith. Oh, Fawn's Quilt Folk Bronte Workshop. I think that that'll probably get it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's watch this video. Hang on. Well, Mary Fonz, how is London? Okay, wait, <laughs> wait. Do you love her or do you love her? That's Jenny Smith. Jenny Smith is a fabulous, she's a fabulous woman. She's like, she's amazing. Jenny Smith is a quilter. She's a mother. She's a writer. She is the quilter who has been um, tapped by, and I, should, I shouldn't should say tapped by Liberty of London, but who has, who, who represents to the quilt world the beauty that is Liberty of London fabric. She wrote a book uh, using, let me see, hold on, hold on. Using Liberty um, fabrics. We should just look at Liberty, right, all night. Um, Liberty Jenny Smith. Um, she, she wrote a beautiful book that was out just last year. Um, look at this, look at this. This is Jenny's book. This is Jenny, okay? This is Jenny Smith and its patterns and its history. And it comes in this gorgeous box. You see this? It's like beautiful dust case. Um, hey, Nori. Hi. So, so this is Jenny, and she is yeah. She works with Liberty, and she makes wonderful quilts. She's so talented. She's so talented, and she lives in Yorkshire. She lives in Yorkshire. Oh, fabulous. Um, she makes all her clothes. So she made that with that great fabric that I think is it isn't K facet, but it's free spirit anyway. So she, that's who you're watching. Okay. So that's Jenny Smith. I've been to her house. She's awesome. And she lives in Bronte country. Okay. So. Ha, it's great. I love, I love living here. Jenny, you have a very, very good, um, people. <laughs> the English people are lovely and, uh, yeah, I just love it here. And now that we're settled, um, more, I've been here a few months. I'm exploring other parts of England and I like those parts too. Well, I was very, very pleased that you took a train to Yorkshire. Not everybody makes it up to the north of England, but you came for a sleepover, didn't you? <laughs> it was a sleepover, the first of many, Jenny. It was awesome. And, uh, your part of England, I mean, I, I had never been there obviously. Um, but Yorkshire, I mean, for someone who hasn't been there, 
Could you just talk about where you grew up, where you live now? It, it took my breath away. It really did. But really, I grew up on the edge of the moor. So oh. Yorkshire is varied for its landscape, but it is quite famous for the moorland. Um, it's quite wild, beautiful scenery, lots of hills, lots of... It really looks like that. Like, I, I know. it. It's gorgeous. It's the moors. It's the moors. I... I saw it for myself. Okay. Rain, lots of green grass from the rain. It's a beautiful place. People are friendly, mm-hmm. down to earth, um, and I and I like it for that reason as well. I think. You know the moors of England, like the famous I famous moors, as in Wuthering Heights, as in the Bronte sisters, as in Jane Eyre. I mean, it, it it's one of the most famous places in the world in terms of you know literature, like the history of literature. The Bronte sisters lived in Haworth? Haworth. I don't know. I, when, I, when I knew you were coming up north, I was like, I think I need to start telling Mary all about the Brontes and give you a sense of, of that landscape and that literature because you love stories. I do. I love stories. And when you told me that the Bronte sisters made a quilt, like there's one, there's one quilt that we know of that they made together. Look! Um, and that it's at... Look at that! Ah, that's it. That's it. Okay, we'll talk more about it. This museum. I mean, when you combine, you know, literature and quilts, like I'm, I'm toast. You know, th- there's no coming back. Like I want to know. I want to know everything. I want to explore it. I want to learn about it. But you know, Jenny, we got to talking about this, and and it was like when I saw the moor, and hung out with you, and when you told me about this quilt, we started, we started scheming. You know, it's like we should share this with everybody else, right? And so we're gonna do it. We are? Yeah. <laughs> and how do we do it? We should we yeah. should give a little history about quilts at that time, you know, that's my favorite thing. And then we should teach, you know, parts of this quilt because it's amazing. It's not the most perfect quilt I've ever seen, which I love, you know. But the pat- Look at that. Look at that. I've got a picture of it. Like we'll we'll take a look at at this picture, you know, again, but look at that. They made that. Anyway, work elements like you you're such a great teacher you should teach some of those elements right yeah it's like i'd love to so there's a replica in the museum but we the original is there so we can go see the original mm. and all those fabrics that they used you know like different the silks and satins in there isn't it it's, it's a really extraordinary quilt you know over 200 years old when they were sat around writing their books and novels and then doing a bit of stitching and embroidery and I don't know just to try and capture the sense of that place and and what they were up to at the time and and also like you're much better at me than you know quilt history like I love that idea of knowing more about that relationship of English paper piece quilts Mm -hmm. and then how how that translated across into the US. And, you know, there's there's so much history between our nations and quilting, isn't there? So mm-hmm. so if you can go off and find out wonderful <laughs> facts, which I know is your amazing skill, then that will be wonderful for me too, because I'll learn lots of new things. People should read the books. You've been reading the books. I have seen ah! it in a Oh, no. In the sunshine with Jane Eyre. It's true. It's true. I have them here just to, because I want to brag, you know, I have never read Jane Eyre. And I read Jane Eyre. And it's got pizza sauce and suntan oil in it. It does. It's great. It's a record of my life here in London. And now, Wuthering Heights. And I'm almost done with it. We wanted to tell people about this now. Read the books. Like, read the books. Read Jane Eyre. Read Wuthering Heights. Read up on the Brontes if you want. You don't have to. There's no, like, homework for this. But these are really good books. Like, it's a page turner. I mean, I cannot put down Wuthering Heights. I'm almost done. Heathcliff is terrible, but I won't spoil anything. Um, read them, read them. And then when the workshop I'm such a nerd. happens, like, like I'm watching myself like do the thing that I do, which is like nod and like, oh yeah. And like smile and I hate it. But then I'm like doing it as I'm watching this. It's not good. We can talk, we can talk about the books and drink tea yeah. and- cake and you know yeah there's some I mean I I've got happy memories my my nan who I lived with as well as my mom and dad we used to always sit in the snowy weather in winter and watch Wuthering Heights with mm. Lawrence and Vivier in and you know just amazing I can't wait to do this with you patchwork lessons a little bit of history you know the Bronte sisters quilt it's so different and so cool folk I think to do yeah. this on, on location you know the, the mm-hmm. thing I love the magazine is that 
you travel to tell those stories. So we can be together in Yorkshire and we can be telling the story of the Brontes and their quilt from the place where it was stitched around the world. And that's and like in a way, you know, lockdown and everything and COVID mm. has, has made things like made people get creative and, and who'd have thought it when I came to see your lectures at QuiltCon in Nashville, who'd have thought, you know, we'd be, we'd be hanging out doing things together. It's crazy. So it I, is it'll crazy. Be fun. People have got to join us. Um, it'll be, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be, and I get to go back to Yorkshire and walk along the moor with you and with hopefully everybody who joins. I mean, yeah, come, we're going to show you the moor. So yeah. Let's do it. See you soon. We'll keep Bye. you posted. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. October 16th and 17th. I had my my little planner, but we can just, I mean, you can look on your calendar. Well, let me look. I think it's a Thursday and Friday Google Calendar. Let's just make sure. The 16th, yeah, it's a, oh, no, no, yeah, that's right. It's a Saturday and Sunday. So, but it's online, you know, it's online. So what I can tell you is there are, um, oh, oh, this is great. Oh, sorry. Okay, I interrupted myself. The chat does that to me. I, 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 I that's what it's all about. So Myra says she's going to figure out a tea menu to, to have at the ready. Tea for one <laughs> for the workshop. I love that. Tea sandwiches, pastries, and tea because this has to be the whole package. The environment has to be perfect. Myra, you are in the right place. So there's going to be a live stream component. You'll you'll find out more. And if, if you get the ticket, I mean, we can go. Let's go to Quilt Folk and just look at this, what they've got um, up on the website now. <laughs> it's like I'm working on the actual thing. So it's like, oh, what's, what's on me? Here we go. So it's $99 pre-sale okay and that's because like oh that's a hefty price tag it is not cheap compared to other like workshops that you might join or buy or subscriptions or things you know whatever i don't know it's up to you you know it's it's not it's not cheap but 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 look what you get so join our live vert i'll let you, you know you can read this you know i'm not gonna just read the screen to you but um two days okay about three hours each day so this is you know six hours maybe longer because there's a live stream component and if we get to chatting we might go on a little longer so saturday from 10 a.m to 1 p.m pacific um and you can if you miss it if you have to miss it you can watch the replay it'll be you can have a recording of that um and you can have that always right so you'll always have the um the um the the lesson right you'll have the recording so you can always have it um well okay three months you have it for three months <laughs> you have it for three months after which is great so you connect via zoom and in terms of what you're gonna make so the thing is part of the reason jenny and i have had fun do making this putting this together we were talking about like what do we teach from the quilt and i my teaching days my patchwork teaching days are behind me i just i love this stuff i love the research the history the talking about what quilts mean and all that so so she's going to do the teaching but of course i was talking with her about what what are the skills what are the things that we can offer in the workshop and there's all kinds of stuff that's going on in this quilt. This is the picture of the Bronte quilt. I mean, you've got hexes, you've got basic patchwork, uh, you know, square in a square. Some of that is just four patches, right? But you've also got that wheel, that sort of not, um, um, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Mariner's compass in the middle. This is a medallion quilt, a frame style quilt. If you were here uh, on the stream when we talked about the four genres, of the four quilt styles you may remember we talked a lot about the frame quilt the medallion quilt this is that and it's classic of that period so that but there's like lots of different things to teach from this quilt and some people will not be interested in learning how to make a mariner's compass with how many is that like 20 like 24 little blades i, I you know uh. so so, you know, but some people are going to want to make hexes and some people want to do different things. So, you know, the Bronte Sisters Workshop is a skill builder for all quilters, has been designed by Jenny to include instruction on constructing an accurate Dresden plate. Okay, because you can find 
those little blades, you know, in lots of different patterns. Handling small scale English paper piece taxi flowers, machine applique, stress free patchwork borders, okay? The mini quilt, this is the mini quilt, okay? Um, requires um, hand and machine sewing. I mean, that's what, that's what you can, that's what you use to make this. But the thing is, is from the beginning, Jenny and I were like, you know, it should be that you can come in and just do whatever part of it you want. I mean, you don't have to make the full thing. If you just want to hang out, you want to work on your hexes, you want to get tips on this and that, obviously you're getting the pattern for this as well, right? So there's just so much that you can come for. Um, and I'm really bad, I am, I am bad at selling things because I, I don't know, I just think, well, someone likes something or they don't. So I don't know, <laughs> like maybe, maybe you like it, maybe you won't. But this, this, well, this stream and this workshop, I am excited about because it's different. It's different. Okay, it's, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go back to the moor and we're gonna hang out, look at her, hang out on the moor and, and film stuff. And we're gonna go to the museum. We're gonna go to the Bronte Museum and look at the quilt. And it may be that Jenny has to do that part on her own, which kills me, but I think she and Kay, actually because of the death in the family and Eric and I were in the States for like 10 days or so, um, I, I may have missed one of the chances to go and look at the actual quilt with the curator, but the footage will be got and uh, you'll see the quilt, you know, for yourself. Anyway, so, um, good, good, good. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. Here we go, here we go. Crisps. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I should call these crisps. Why have I, why have I been calling them chips? It's like the one thing that I could have done perfectly in like being a Londoner now is say, get yourself a bowl of crisps. And I failed. All right, well. Registering today gets you a 30% dis or a $30 discount, making it $99. Um, okay, no, 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 no. So you can read more about it. So here, there's another video. I'm not gonna play it now because I want you to go over there and look at it. So now I wanna to talk to you about the book a little bit. Again, I gotta just, I don't wanna give the game away, you know? How many of you, how many of you have read Jane Eyre? And from watching other live streamers, I know that I can ask you that and say, put a one in the chat, put a one in the chat if you have read Jane Eyre. Um, I hadn't read it. I never had. And it's so good. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing book. She is such a wonderful, uh, hero, heroine, right? Such a wonderful heroine. And I took lots of notes, of course. And, um, I just got to put a one cause I want to be like among the number, right? Um, I just never had, because I guess, I don't know, it didn't seem exciting. <laughs> But like, what was I thinking? It's so exciting. Rochester and, oh, it's scary. You know, it's this gothic novel. You all know this. I mean, it's it's like the, the beginning when she's living with her horrible aunt and, and she's, she's, you know, abused by those terrible people, you know, smacked by that cousin of hers. And anyway, it's just terrifying. And, and there's the, 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 you know, the Rochester, I don't, I don't know. I, is it a spoiler alert? If you're, if you're telling the story of a, a book that was published in, in 1847, you know, I don't know, but I didn't know much about it. So I was just, I couldn't put it down. And of course I was looking for all the instances of sewing and quilting in the book. And there are more than a few. My notes of course are now out of this book but in the Bronte workshop, I'll go through the different places where it's mentioned that someone was sewing or someone had their sewing. And also Myra, I made a note um, whenever they ate something, whenever actually like specific food was mentioned, I, um, I wrote it down. And I think Jenny and I, I said, Jenny, they mentioned oat cakes. 
at one point in Jane Eyre, they were having oat cakes. And oat cake, anything with cake, I'm, I'm good. And I like oats. So maybe, you know, maybe there's some cake that uses like oat milk or something. But if we can't have actual cake <laughs> with oat, an oat uh, component, oatmeal cookies, that's good enough for me. I could make a, a pre-Victorian oat cake, but something tells me. They didn't use as much sugar as I would like to have, you know, in my oat cake. But we're going to have snacks as well. Um, and we're going to have a little tea with you and everything. So then, <laughs> yeah, oat cakes, exactly. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. So so then, just just one more note on this because it's fun, you know, it's fun to talk about about this workshop and about the whole thing. It was Jenny's idea, by the way. I mean, brilliant. Wuthering Heights put a two in the chat if you have read Wuthering Heights. <sighs> I need to talk about it. <laughs> I mean, Jane Eyre wins, okay? It wins for me in terms of both novels, you know, like which did I like better? I like Jane Eyre a little bit more. And the reason is Wuthering Heights, when I mentioned it on that video to Jenny, I loved it. Oh man, it was a page turner. I could not put it down. I had no idea that that um, Heathcliff was a villain. I didn't know, I hadn't read it. Or maybe, I, I just was, I don't know, I just missed it. I wasn't an English major. I wasn't really into the Victorian, it's pre-Victorian, but like, I just, I don't know. I was reading other things in my life. So I, did, I thought, I thought, here's what was a revelation about it. I thought Wuthering Heights, when I thought of Wuthering Heights, and I'm giving away some of the things that I'm going to say in the workshop, but hopefully there's, you know, lots and lots of people who have not, who will not have heard this, you know, that I'm saying now. When I thought of Wuthering Heights, I literally, the word withering, I was like, ugh, oh, I'm, I'm withering, like withering, withering on the moor, you know, with love for Heathcliff. Like, I, I just... I just put it together in my mind that it was this bodice ripping. Oh yeah. Oh good. I'm so glad you're reading it. Cause it's really, really good. It's really good. Until like the last, anyway. So I was surprised because I didn't know that it was really not a story about like bodice ripping love. It, it isn't at all. It isn't at all. And I really, really was so into it and I was scared. It's kind of scary too, because it's this gothic novel, right? That was a thing that happened at the time is that there, there were these novels that were kind of scary, you know, or had spooky stuff in them. But I just, I did feel, okay, I'm not gonna say much. I felt like it dragged a little in parts. That's all I'm gonna say, that's all I'm gonna say. But it's fascinating. And now to close out the, um, little moment on, uh, yeah, he is a tortured soul, Nancy. That is exactly what Heathcliff is. Um, I just have to, okay, what is this? Okay, so then, yeah, Michael Fassbender. Who's seen, <laughs> put a 9,000 in the chat if you've seen Michael Fassbender in Jane Eyre. I, I am a Michael Fassbender fan. <laughs> Oh my God, I I don't get too like woo woo about movies or actors, whatever. It's like, it's a business, it's an industry. They're all working stiffs, you know, like whatever. I don't really care. But yeah, like I just gotta go with the 9,000. I mean, I didn't even really know this actor. I am hopelessly out of date on everything, okay? But of course, after I read Jane Eyre, I had to like, I was like, which movie version is good? And so I found this movie version, which is from 2011, and Michael Fassbender is in it. And I have decided that Michael Fassbender is a very attractive man. Let's watch, let's watch this three minute clip because, because, and then we'll go to quilts. You know, if somebody's here for quilts and they're like, what's going on? Well, we're doing a Bronte quilt workshop. Oh yeah. And then we will look at the quilt uh, a little bit, but, um, but it's about the Brontes, and so we're looking at, we're going to look at Michael Fassbender, because you'll see. Oh. It's a strange night you've passed. Yes, sir. You showed no fear. 
I was afraid of the inner room. She's great in this. You are in no danger. Mr. Rochester, who did that violence? I cannot tell you. Why do you protect them? I dragged through life a capital error. Its consequence blights my existence. For years, I've sought to escape it. <gasps> Tortured soul. This spring, I came home, heart sore and soul withered. And I met a gentle stranger whose society revived me. Mm. With her, I feel I could live again <gasps> in a higher, purer way. Tell me, am I justified in overleaping an obstacle of custom to attain her? Hmm. Hmm. There is an obstacle. A mere conventional impediment. Hmm. But what can it be? If you cherish an affection, so then fortune alone cannot impede you. Oh, Jane Eyre. Oh, yes. so good. And if the lady is of noble stock and has indicated that she may reciprocate. Jane, of whom do you think I speak? He's like, I'm talking about you. She doesn't get it. Every single one. No, no. I'm asking what Jane Eyre would do to secure my happiness. Okay, all right, all right, all right. They they need to kiss. And they do. <laughs> I mean, they do. Um, yeah, so he's gorgeous, and I just love him. And what the funniest thing about this, about this, Jane Eyre is really funny, and she says at one point, she's like, oh, he went on and on about my green eyes, and, uh, Reader, my eyes are blue, but that's fine. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Take the workshop. We'd love to have you. It'll be great. October 16th and 17th. I'll put this link in the chat. You watch it at least once a year. Oh, that's great. Ruth Wilson is amazing in it. Let's see. Toby. Toby. Yeah, volume up a notch. You know what? I turned it up. Yeah, I turned it up. Uh, Eric. That's Eric. My husband is watching. Did you hear how I have a crush on Michael Fassbender? I hope not. I hope I didn't uh, say that when you were in the chat. Oh, no. Um, I just did. Uh, Eric's in the chat, everybody. My husband, Eric. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, I'm going to pull up this picture of the quilt. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm conflicted, obviously, because I want you to take the workshop and, and learn about it there. But this so that's 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 the remake hang on one second hang on okay so this see look for my lecture or for my history lesson i'm pulling up all these really great this is a, a cameo of of the brontes right charlotte bronte and yeah so i'm pulling up all these these drawings and things for the for my presentation on on uh during the workshop, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna talk about quilts of that period and all different things. But so this, let me just hide that, okay? Oh yeah, wow, this is, uh, let's hide all of that so you can see what's going on here. So this quilt on the right, that's the Bronte quilt. And you'll hear all, you'll hear all about it, but it's really, it's, it's in pretty bad shape, I mean, <laughs> It's also like, it's not perfect. And that's one of the things I just, I, I can't say enough. I said it to people when I was teaching them patchwork out on the road, you know, back nine bazillion years ago. But I say it all the time now. And that's that, you know, quilts that aren't perfect. That's most quilts. And, and I don't want to sound patronizing. Like, you know, most people don't make perfect quilts. Like, you'd be like, uh, yeah, okay, I know. But there is something that happened in the commercialization of the quilt industry, like in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s and on till today. Things are changing a little bit, I think. But there's a there's a sense that th th there, there became kind of, it, it became such big business that you had more magazines more TV shows, more tutorials on the internet too, more content that was um, perfect, right? Like perfect quilts. Like I'm gonna teach you how to make this quilt and here is the quilt I'm gonna teach you. And because I need to have, you know, the authority on teaching you this quilt, this quilt is perfect, right? So there's more and more content about, you know, quilts, but the prototype that, people are showing you in the magazine 
on the TV show is is pristine. It's a perfect quilt. It's perfectly made. Every point matches. Everything just looks great. And that's it makes sense that you would want to do that if you're trying to make money. <laughs> because you want, you know, you can't show a sloppy quilt and be like, give me your money. I'll teach you how to make this, you know, because a lot of people would be like, well, I can already make that <laughs> because it doesn't look amazing. And I make quilts that are great, but they're not amazing, you know. So if you're in charge of a big fancy company, you want to have the best stuff. And so because of that over the years, and I've mentioned this before, but mom and Liz, mom, I haven't heard Liz talk about this, but I haven't spent as much time around Liz Porter as I have around Marianne Fons. But mom has said, you know, she and Liz, you know, were part of that kind of machine. They, they sold kits and they had the magazine and the show and they were one of a very amazing group of people. They certainly weren't the only ones, but, you know, they had a show where they taught you how to make a certain quilt with a certain tool a certain way. And over time, you know, mom agrees with me when I say the quilts that we make, they're fabulous, but sort of on balance, they got a little plastic. Some, some quilts got a little plastic. I'm trying to be diplomatic, but I mean, I look at some, some quilts from like, I don't know, kind of like in the early 2000s, I felt like they really like the magazine, and I'm talking about Fonz and Porter magazine. Let me be specific because I can say whatever I want about Fonz and Porter magazine. I mean, Fonz and Porter here, let me put it this way. Mom and Liz used to go around the country and teach like I did later. And they would, they would see quilts that women showed or men showed at guild meetings. You know, when they, they would give a lecture, they would stick around, they would see the show and tell. And mom and Liz actually picked quilts out for the magazine from the gigs that they did, you know, they saw great quilts and like amazing stuff. And they were like, wow, like this is awesome. Do you want to be in Fonz and Porter magazine? But then over time, the fabric companies, they, I mean, it's not just their fault at all, but, but the quilting got such big business. It got to be such big business that you had all these fabric companies and all this, this industry, this commerce around the quilt that it became far more uh, typical for a pattern designer working with a fabric company, you know, design a quilt and pitch it to mom and Liz or pitch it to APQ or pitch it, whatever, because that, that sells patterns and it sells fabric. And we love that. We are here for that. Right. But there was a bit of soul. I can't see the chat on the screen I'm looking at, so I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to catch up. There was, there's, I feel like, I feel like you may not agree that there was a little bit of a, a, hum, a hum, human quality that was lost. And, and I have to be careful because the fabric company, like I, I have a couple people in the industry that I avoid, <laughs> you know, when I see them at quilt market and definitely they avoid me too. But for the most part, the quilt industry is amazing. I love everybody. Like it's just, if you stay in the in a business long enough, you know, you have relationships that don't go the way you want. But for the most part, you know, I think about Moda people and Free Spirit people and they're amazing. So I'm not throwing shade at them, but it's just a business. And so I feel like over time, and now I'm going to get back to the Bronte quilt, I feel like over time, things got even with the moderns. Things got a little bit cut and dry, <laughs> if you will. And quilts like this remind us, the Bronte quilt on the right, remind us that quilts have never needed to be perfect. The best quilts, in my view, um, aren't perfect. Whoops, sorry, let me pull this down here. Um, aren't perfect. And I like the ones that aren't perfect the most. <laughs> that's, that's what I like the most. Um, okay, let me catch up. Let me catch up on the chat a little bit. Hang on, hang on. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Fassbender <laughs> was in Steve Jobs movie. Yes, he was. Um, yeah, you love that it's wonky, Molly. Same. Done is better than perfect, Carol says. Amen. Someone else told me once, done is good. Done is good. Done is good. Um, yeah, SJ, like quilt kits, you, f you feel like you're just manufacturing someone else's quilt. I feel that. Um, but Dana says there's a place for kits and, and I agree. Um, sometimes you just don't feel like doing all that work. If you need a quick quilt for a kid, 
you know, somebody's graduating or somebody has a baby or, I don't know, somebody just needs a quilt. Maybe you need a project for a sew-in or something like that. Kits, man. They've been around a long time. And Mom and Liz, I should mention, I know what we'll look at. We'll, we're going to look at kit quilts from the 1930s and 40s. So much. Or the 40s and 50s. Amazing. That's what we're going to look at. See, it always happens. It always happens. Something comes up and we know what we're going to do. Mom and Liz did not invent kits. Kits have been around and they're, they serve their purpose and they're great. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, that's, that's something too, Carol, like picking fabric is your favorite part. I think, I think people are good at different things and I love picking fabric. I hate doing binding, which I talk about all the time. Um, but I, I, I like picking fabric and, and some people just don't. And some people are really good at machine quilting and I will, like many of us, I will pay someone else to do it because I hate it because, well, I like it, but I'm bad at it anyway. And that makes me feel like an imposter more than I already do. Uh, when it comes to quilting. So so this is an imperfect quilt. It's also in pretty bad shape, but you can see it's just not perfect. And it was made by the Brontes and that makes it incredible. And here on the left is the replica of the quilt that was made by a guild. I'm not sure which one. I feel very bad. I should know. I should know, but we'll, we'll learn about it in the workshop. And look, it's perfect and it's fabulous. So we want our perfect quilts and we want our imperfect quilts. We want all the quilts. Okay, this is great. Man, I love this. I could just stream all day. Okay, so let's look at, let's, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. I pressed my button. Um, Eric, if you're still here lurking, we have to figure out with my little button deck, we have to figure out why like I just pressed my little button to get Google to pop up and it did, but it popped up on my monitor and not the screen where everyone can see the screen where I want to impress people with, but I can do dusty Springfield though. Can't I? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, that was, that was uh, anticlimactic, but, but maybe I'll be able to fix it. Maybe I'll, t I'll just turn on a video and I'll fix it while we're all watching. But isn't that kind of like, I'm not a parent, but I think parents do that sometimes, right? When they just need to get something done, they'll like turn on a Disney video <laughs> and like be like, okay, go watch a video. Mom's got to do something. You know, that, that's kind of funny that, that I would put on a video for you all and go fix something. But okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at quilt kits. So where are we going to go? to look at quilt kits from the 1940s and 50s. We're gonna go Rose Werner, I believe is her name, Rose Werner quilt kit book. Oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. I can pull up pictures from Quilt Folk. There's Rose. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. I am going to pull up something. Now I have to do it here because I don't want you to be seeing my Dropbox, you know, for quilt folk, because that's a little bit private. You know, I don't want to <laughs> be looking through, you know, intellectual property, but I'm going to pull up a folder of, um, are you, look at this, look at what I have to do. Pick the spiral galaxy. This is what I have to do to get into my Dropbox. Pick the spiral gap. Okay. Pick the spiral galaxy. Great, thanks. Thanks, I'm glad I can identify a spiral galaxy. I mean, when I first saw that, I was like, I don't think I can do this, but it was clear. I'll get, I'll give you that Dropbox. Um, I'm gonna pull up a folder of quilt kit images that we took when we were in Minnesota for issue 13 of Quilt Folk Magazine. When we did issue 13, of Quilt Folk, Minnesota. We went to Minnesota and there's a woman here, a woman in Minnesota, uh, Rosemary Warner, who is the expert or is one of the experts on quilt kits from the 40s and the 50s. Um, primarily, and I'm sure, you know, there's there's more to it than that, but the, the, the kits that I was thinking of um, just a minute ago were the kits, you know, in the 40s and 50s that I'm thinking of. So here, here we go, here we go. 
let's take a look at some of these some of these quilts i did i i've talked to mike mccormick you know about about all this like hey i'm gonna do this twitch thing can i show some quilt folk stuff or like can i talk happened okay i'm reconnected if something like blipped um <clears throat> that was really scary i don't know i don't know what that was about are you all there okay 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 Whew. sorry all right something it said o obs is you know disconnected and and that was really scary so i i apologize but it did something pretty strange all right, I'm getting that back. What I wanna do is have some text pulled up for you so that while I'm going through these pictures, I can read to you, right, about this. Cause I'm not just gonna riff on quilt kits and make some stuff, you know, make some content, you know, come, come out of my mouth that's not actually correct. So I wanna show you these pictures, but I also want to be able to talk about these quilts in an intelligent way um, as best I can. So here's what we're gonna do. So here we go. I'm pulling up the pictures. Look at this, this was, you'll see more. You'll see more of, of what you're seeing right now. Um, this is unfinished, right? This is an unfinished kit, but let me pull up Quilt Kits 1940s and just see what we get there. Um, okay, that looks good. I wanna find some good, some good, Cindy's antique quilts. And you know, and this is the thing, like I, you know, I didn't know we were gonna go here. If I knew we were gonna talk about it, would I have a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, pulled up for you? Of course, of course I would, but what's the fun in like, I have prepared a talk for you about this. It's fine, but, ooh, this is good. Okay, well, I hope this is right. This is from vintagekitquilts.net. <laughs> this, is, this is what we're looking at, okay? So I'm gonna read you this. This is Judy's original quilt collection. This seems legit. It seems legit. We'll, we'll find out. We'll soon find out. And as I go through this and read this to you, I am going to do this for you, okay? Look at that. Ugh. If you don't subscribe to Quilt Folk Magazine, you really should. And I should tell you, you know, what I pulled up is from the Dropbox, I pulled up the folder of photographs from the photo shoot. I really need to check this with Mike because <laughs> I mean, no kidding. This is a treat. Like what you're about to see is a treat because in an article in Quilt Folk, in, you know, you see, I mean, in a really big article in Quilt Folk, you know, about Rosemary Warner who was the subject of this of this story in Minnesota, the expert on quilt kits, this woman with this amazing uh, collection. You know, her story was 10 pages or something. There's only so many pictures you can put into a 10 page story. And as editor in chief at the time, you know, you pick the best pictures that work with the story that the writer wrote and so forth. Well, you're gonna see all of the pictures, all of the pictures. And there are 47 of them in this one folder. And then we have pictures of Rose and on all this, we'll see. But these are the quilts. These are the quilt pictures. All right, <clears throat> have a glass of wine. I better have a chip. Mm. Now I won't be able to tell you about what you're seeing, you know, specifically, but you'll get the idea. Okay, <clears throat> History of Kit Quilts. Oh, great. Written by Judy Feibusch. Judy Feibusch is a quilt historian Oh, that's not a, well, okay, no, I'm gonna stay with this. A couple of these might be Rose's own, own quilts. I think she made that one, but whatever. You'll be able to tell. Judy Feibusch is a quilt historian and restoration professional. Oh, lovely. She's legit. She's definitely legit. Um, 
Yeah, that's a rose quilt. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Judy Feibush, um, who developed the following pre- presentation study. This is so great. On vintage and antique kit quilts. Any comments or corrections can be sent to Judy at Feibush.net. I got to put this link in the chat right now. Not that we're going to be correcting Judy, but just because you need to, you need to do, you need to like, good. okay, good, good. Yeah. You need to visit Judy. All right. This is red work. I think this is a quilt that uses antique kit red work blocks. And maybe, maybe this is one of Rose's own. Looks like it's on the design wall, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. The 1970s. This is Judy. The 1970s restarted a large interest in quilts and quilt making. Antique and vintage quilts came out of the closets and modern women came to realize what treasures had been lurking in an everyday, in an everyday essential as a bed covering. However, as these beauties surfaced, it was also noted that many were not individual or original creations, but some were made from kits. She put an exclamation point, kits. I mean, in there it's, it's like all caps and with an exclamation point. I love it. <clears throat> okay. Some were made from kits. Horrors, also all caps, exclamation point, horrors. Thought some of the notable quilt authorities at that time, some can still feel that way today. Oh yes, horror, they thought some of them did. You'll see a lot of takes, right? We. We try a lot of different style shots before we get the right one, right? <laughs> um, I considered this for the cover, but it didn't make it. After all, quilt kits, according to them, according to the experts, we're back to Judy, um, according to some experts, they were not very creative in that they could be replicated, these kit quilts, by anyone and were more common uh, to, were more common to see or easy to make. And aside, she says, not by a long shot, especially the applique ones. And kit quilts were seen as rather mundane. Fortunately, they have been proven very wrong on most accounts. Look at that. Look at that quilting. Okay, I can't. This, that was me, that wasn't Judy. Kit quilts encouraged women to quilt who felt that they didn't have enough creativity. Wow, to tackle a quilt all on their own. I didn't really think about it like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. Like it gave access, right, to people. Today, the designers and manufacturers of the quilt kits, a bygone, okay, hang on now. Hang on, don't, don't fail me now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, don't, 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 don't be weird. Don't be weird. Okay, Eric. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Just checking. I like this content a lot. <laughs> Personally, I'm enjoying it. I hope I hope things are okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, that's a great look at that camera work by Melanie Zacek. That close up, so nice. Okay. Um, today, the designers and manufacturers of the quilt kits of bygone years are viewed with delight and are proving to be quite valuable. Uh, eBay of the 1990s certainly brought them into the public's eye and helped make them very costly. <laughs> well, yes. All right. Dropbox is, is loading. It's loading. It, it, it loads in its own time. Let's just give it a little, give it a little, little prompt. Mm -hmm. Dropbox, you're 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 making me sad. Okay, here we go. Here we go. They're really big files. I don't know if that matters, but sometimes it does. All right, but that's okay because we've got stuff to read. Um, the kits of the 1920s. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry. Quilt kits came into popularity and vogue. It's loading. It'll be here soon. Um, in the 1920s and 30s, although some date back to the late 1800s. Interesting. Some are still being produced by companies today. The kits were aided in production due to increase in printing period of periodicals and mass advertising. 
Exactly. Like you could make a kit and sell it to a lot of people because you could advertise that you had it, you know, like why, why make a quilt kit if you can only sell it to three people, but if you can sell it to the women of Chicago, you know, by advertising in the Tribune, it makes, excuse me, it makes sense to, to manufacture that, that quilt. I mean that kit. Okay. All right. Look at those little guys. Now these, you've seen these, you know, children's quilts, right? With these little bunnies and stuff and just the little juvenile, you know, um, motifs and things. Okay. The most notable individual designers, companies, and stores and catalogs who sold these kits. Oof. Oh, I loved that. Was a that was great. That was fun. Look at this, um, Molly. That's so sweet. Um, the most notable individual designers, Judy says, companies, stores, and catalogs who sold these kit quilts are briefly described below, with notations of websites to pursue, to peruse. Many may not be shown due to the lack of information available. Okay, da da da. This, I want to tell you a little bit. This is a behind the scenes moment. When I was in this beautiful garden setting up this style shot, <clears throat> Eric, your wife, I don't want to comment on an area. Your wife is, she's a very strong woman <laughs> because, because I had to, these quilts are huge. And I don't know if Judy's going to talk about it, but these kit quilts that Rose Marie had, they were enormous. So many of them were absolutely enormous. And and if you want to make a, a really pretty style shot of a quilt and it's really big, you're going to have a heck of a time because you have to drape the thing. I could go on about style shots. I won't right now. But I mean, you have to drape it in this lovely way. And the bigger it is, the more like ugh, you just have this wad of quilt. You know, you can't just sort of lovingly toss it onto a couch. You know, you have to really wrestle with it. Thank goodness we had this rack, and we were able to um, to get some get some height. <laughs> you need height on it. Okay, okay. Um, all these different takes. Oh, what a great shot. Okay, a brief discussion about Ann Orr. That's A N N E O R R. Herbert Vermeeren and Marie Webster as individuals follows. I'm going to show you. These are the names she's saying. Anne Orr is very famous. Herbert Vermeeren and Marie, I don't know Herbert at all. Marie Webster is very, very famous too. Both Marie Webster and Anne Orr are in the Quilters Hall of Fame. Both women would be awesome places to start on a stream, you know? So remind me at some point, be like, hey, talk about Marie Webster. Um, others of note, I'm showing you these names so that you can just see who I'm talking about. Um, you know, Anne Orr, it's kind of a strange sounding name if you don't see it visually. Marion Cheever Whiteside Newton, I don't know her. Carly Sexton, mm, don't know that I know that name. And Ruby Short McKim, definitely know Ruby McKim. Many of you will know some of these names too. And Mary McElwain. Um, yeah, I mean, Ruby McKim, all of these people we should talk about. Okay, I gotta catch them on the chat. Ann Orr. <clears throat> Ann Orr started her own business called Ann Orr Studios and wrote for Southern Woman's Magazine. She designed for J.P. Coates Thread and wrote a column in 1919 for Good Housekeeping until she retired in 1940. Her business employed over 100 people making patterns, transfers, and some 80 quilt designs and kits which were pieced, appliqued, and even some whole cloth quilts. Wow. They also made other needlework designs, and some were engaged in basting and or finishing quilts too. Most of her applique quilts were floral designs, and she favored scalloped or notched edges. Interesting. Okay, so this is, this is an Ann Orr, an Ann Orr quilt kit. That's from, that's from Judy. Wow, you see, it's big. Look how big it is. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Come back to me, Judy. Here we, here we go. Eric, let's do it. Let's do a tech check, you know, next time you're, next time you're here. Um, okay. The Garland quilt. Okay. Ruby and Kim. Okay. Well, you know, maybe we save some of this for, um, 
when we talk about Ruby McKim. I want to show you, well, yeah, okay, I want to show you more of these pictures. Um, I just kind of want to know about a little bit more about the kit quilts themselves, you know? Um, okay, Aunt Martha Colonial Patterns, Kansas City, started selling kits in 1930. Um, this particular company called it the Colonial Ready Cut Quilt Block Company. They published a catalog. Um, yeah, there was just so, it seemed like there were so many of them. There were so many quilt kit companies. Fairway Needlecraft Company, that's an interesting one. Look at the detail on this. So, so you know, for people who have seen these these kits or who have kits from this time because you can still find you know at estate sales probably garage sales definitely at quilt shows where there's like a vintage you know stall where you can buy vintage fabric and and old quilt blocks and things i mean you can still find quilt kits you know from this period to make i mean has anybody ever made one of these the petals like every petal was it cut out for you that's what I kind of want to know, you know, and, and it's just part of the reason of doing this whole stream is like, I really like learning about this stuff and this is a very good way to do it. But if you know, you know, or you've seen someone do this, like, was it really, was it really like every piece was cut out for you? I don't know. I don't know. Hang on one second. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to get to a quilt that I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Yeah. The colors of the petals, aren't they great? Um, okay. Here, look at this. Look at this. This is the one. This was on the wall at Rosemary's house. We talked about tree of life recently. Um, this is a top and it's basted. So yeah, I mean, obviously, yes. Like, I'm gonna zoom in here. Obviously, these had to be, I gotta zoom in with this. Um, whoop, 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 whoop. Nope, nope, nope. Well, I don't want to upload anything, Dropbox. That's not what I wanna do. You can go away now, thank you. Maybe that's why it was slow, I don't know. So, this, mm -mm -mm. This is basted, right? So it had to be that all of these leaves were cut out, right? For you when you got the kit. Look at these birds. Now, like I said, I don't know, you know, anything more about this particular kit because, you know, we were there with Rose and, and for the Quilt Folk um, uh, article, you know, for, to do the story. And so I'd have to go back and look at notes and things um, from from the interview. But, um, <laughs> look at this thing. I mean, it's just northern, that's a northern flicker. Molly knows some of these birds because of course she does, because she's a librarian and she's Molly. Are you a birder? Molly, are you a birder? You know, one per, you know somebody who's a birder is, is Mary Kay Waldvogel. And Mary Kay Waldvogel is one of the most famous quilt historians that's ever lived. She is my friend. And I call her Wald. I don't think she minds the Wald. You're a minor birder. She's a minor birder. Are you a minor bird er? <laughs> minor bird. Um, I want to see a couple close-ups here to another quilt. Yeah, I mean, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Wow, wow, wow. Hmm. I wonder if Rose was making that one, like if she was gonna finish it, you know? She's gonna finish it. Um, I think, let's see. Du -du 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 -du. Du -du -du -du. Well, Rose was just so sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel a little bit weird going into these, these photos, but look, let's just look at her. Just look at her. Look at this nice lady. Hopefully this is just a big ad for Quilt Folk, you know? This is the kind of work that we made. Well, that they still make at Quilt Folk. I left as editor so that I could do, you know, stuff like this. This is Rose in her house talking to us about quilt kits. Isn't that great? She's pretty cool. So that's a little bit about that. All right. 
The birdies are delightful. I know. I know. They're great. Okay. So that's her book, by the way. That's the Quilt Kit book that she wrote. And I don't know if you can still get it. Let's see if you can get it. Hold on. eBay. Well, most most of you, not all of you, are going to want eBay.com. Yeah, she's got a sweet face. She was so nice. Did I, I feel like I spilled something. Not on a quilt, but I feel like... Did something happen where, like... Oh, I left... I think I left a hat or something. <laughs> I think I did. And she mailed it to me. So let's see. Rose Marie Warner quilt kit book. Can you get it? Hmm. Oh, dear. Marie Stopes and the Sexual Revolution. Eh, it's not the same. Not the same thing. Let's see if we can find it up here. I just want to look for you. I want to look for you because that's what we're doing. Shopping. Shopping. Hmm. Well, that's her website. Well, maybe you can get it from her. Yeah, you can get it from her. Look, click the link below to order your copy today. Okay, and I have the book and it's great and you should get it. All right. All those photos were taken, by the way, by Melanie Zacek. Melanie Zacek, she's brilliant. Okay. Um, someone, someone is in the chat who says, who has a very interesting question. I don't think that they know about quilt kits and that's fine. They should go back and watch the replay. Okay, so um, we, I, I, I mentioned something earlier about, um, about reclaimed materials for quilts. And I wanna go back to that because th there's so much more to say about quilt kits, right? But I, I wanna, this is, this is a time when I say, okay, I don't know enough about quilt kits. I wanna learn more. And it's, it's this warring part of myself because I want the Twitch stream to be engaging and I want the pace to be good. But then I also have seen Twitch streamers who just, who like don't talk much and they just like, like here, here, let's pretend that this is, um, I think we have a troll. I think, do we have a troll? I think I have my first troll. This is amazing. Wow. This is amazing. I think. I think that's a troll, right? How do I block him? <laughs> You're not a troll, chill. Well, I think I think if you say if I think if you say the thing that you said, you're a troll. Um, don't block you. Oh, is that you're you're asking me nicely? Um, that's interesting. That's interesting. So I have to, so why shouldn't I block you? No, I'm not supposed to engage with you at all. Do you I mean, do you make quilts? See, now I'm engaging with you. I'm just glad I'm not engaged to you, you know? That would be bad. Um, I think, oh, here's what I can do. Here's what I can do. I can, I could, I could block you or I could report you. I think I'll just block you. I blocked him, you guys, I blocked my first, I blocked my first troll. We had a troll and I blocked him, I blocked him. Oh, good, good. Oh, we just like took care of it. Um, yes, and SJ, I just saw that. When I looked at the chat, it was like highlighted. I just approved it. You said there was some comment where like, it, it, I think it flags a comment. It actually happened to me the other day because I was watching some Twitch people, you know, like just trying to engage with other creators and stuff. And I said like, that's crazy about some amazing thing that she was sewing. And it, it said your comment is being held for moderation or something because maybe, you know, the algorithm, the robot, you know, it doesn't want someone to say you're crazy or something. So I just saw that happen with with you um, and approved your comment right away, right? Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we blocked him. I mean, what is that about? Hazmatology. I don't even like, I don't even like talking to him at all he's trying I, look i can see this now look 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 user hidden message hidden from blocked user Ugh, what a gross what a gross person you know that's gonna happen look the more people who come in here what will happen eventually is some of you <laughs> um some of the original crew right the people who i trust um 
if you are willing to or you want to, you, I'll assign a couple mods, a couple moderators, and then you have the power to block people like that or to approve or not approve comments. And believe me, some of these live streams, I mean, you all have probably watched live streams of something before. If you have a hundred people, if you have a thousand people, if you have so many people in a chat, you have tons of trolls, people who are just gross and just want to say gross things and be rude and awful. I do not understand this behavior, but um, the mods are who take care of that because the host can't do that. You know, I can do it now because we don't have that many people here. Right. I mean, we have more than we need. Right. We have a party, but we don't have enough people where I need to be assigning mods. But thank you, Nori. I mean, ugh, gross. What do you, it, don't you have something better to do? And you know what? The answer is no, they do not have anything better to do whatever. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, great. So let's do, let's do one other thing tonight that seems, that seems it's interesting to me and I want to get your thoughts on it because let's look at, hold on, let me look at a crazy quilt. Um, oh yeah, now I can go back up here. I have a theory and you can tell me what you think. Um, Oh yeah. Oh wait. I, what I wanted to finish when the troll came in, what I was saying is like, there's a, there's a, um, a con conflict that I have inside sometimes. And that is that I want to keep, I want to make this stream a place where you want to come and hang out and learn and be excited with me. Um, but I also have to make sure that, you know, that it that it really is teaching me too and it is it is it just did right quilt kits one of the things I learned is that I don't know as much as I want to know about them I don't I know what they look like I know a little I know who to ask right Rosemary Werner but I don't and I've seen a lot of them obviously but I don't know as much and and the twitch stream that kind of got me thinking that I I could do this whole thing and that it would be fun that person you know Here's what it would look like sometimes. I am now going to perform and imitate what that stream looked like sometimes, okay? And it was kind of awesome, but but it was different. It was like this. perfect you see, you see instead of like like going oh no you know hope hopefully it'll load pretty soon some another twitch person or live streamer would just not care you know they would just make their notes and not really worry maybe they look at the chat and be like oh hi hi jim hi how are you great and it was kind of like that you know but i and and it's good because that person here we go that person who was doing that stream clearly was really working, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to make a note about this and maybe I'll go, oh yeah, here was another thing. Watch this, watch this. This is really, whew. Do you know JSTOR? Do you, you all know about JSTOR? It's this, you know, um, it's a, you know, scholarly paper thing. So let's see a crazy quilt. And they would just like read, you know, sometimes read papers on things. So so that's that's kind of it's good if you're if you're wanting to to research you know deeply but i kind of figure that if i'm inviting you along then i just want to give you more than that that because that's the that's the kind of thing i think quilters want you know we're not just um if you're watching this, you know, we're not just, just scholars, maybe we're scholars, but we're, we're quilters and we have so much visual stuff to look at and I get so excited. So, so, but it's an interesting thing because the quilt, quilt kit stuff, I want to know more. Um, yes. Ooh, Molly, I have, I do have a question for you about, about this stuff. Um, you know, I want to, I do want to entertain you. I do. I was, I've been performing on lecture stages or theater stages for most of my life you know I'm just kind of like 
I'm kind of like that. I always have been. And so I don't think I could be content to just look at kit quilt, you know, scholarly papers for two hours and, and that's it, you know, so, so we'll see. I want to, I want to know more. I have the opportunity to learn more right now, but I also have an opportunity to be a little bit more engaging with you. And that's what I'm choosing. So here's what I need you to te to tell me, Molly. <sighs> Taylor and Francis. Molly's our librarian. I've got a good subscription to JSTOR, but Taylor and, no wait, hold on. Taylor and Francis. I mean, I want to, here it is, here it is. There are so many amazing papers and things that are owned by Taylor and Francis. It's this like really fancy, you know, publishing company? What is it, Molly? I mean, it's like, yeah, it provides a home for validated, trusted research from the world's brightest and best minds. Our approach to publishing has... So Taylor and Francis Online brings together over 2,700 journals, including the world's largest program of social science and humanities journals. I mean, I have found cool stuff about quilts or about other things, topics that I'm interested in, photography, theory. It's a long story. But... I, it's so expensive, Molly. I can't, uh, <laughs> oh good, Nori, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, they're expensive, yeah, and, and, and I just, it's just, it's just a little bit beyond my reach. Maybe if I have a grant someday, you know, I'll be able to afford a Taylor and Francis membership, but they have such great papers and things that you can download, And but I mean, sometimes a single, paper it's $35 or something for just one one uh, paper so if you ever get the hookup on Taylor and Francis let me know Google Scholar Google Scholar is good I bet a lot of people didn't know about don't know about Google Scholar if you don't know about Google Google Scholar you're about to hang on one second okay da -da -da -da. Yeah, Google Scholar provides a simple way to broadly search for scholarly literature. Watch this. Watch this. Quilts. Quilt. Ooh, look, see? Look, you can see what I've been searching. Imagine that. Quilt history. The natural history of the traditional quilt. Oh, that's a book. That's a very interesting book. Quilting art history in America. These are the things that I've looked at. Quilt language. Towards a poetics of quilting. We are nerding out. Look at this. Look at this. Taylor and Francis. What did I say? I don't plan these things. I can't anticipate this. It's just what's happening. It's my life. Quilt language towards... A, I have not read this. I have not read this because look. Okay, let's just see what it's about. Now I really am getting... This is really nerdy, okay? I'm doing what I said that... <laughs> that it happens sometimes when you're nerding out, right? The aesthetics of quilt making can be defined... Oh, don't you love this? Do you love this? By exploring three ways in which quilts speak through their formal qualities. Let's see, I'm going to do it like Eric does it when we're reading a list. Okay. The aesthetics of quilt making can be defined by exploring three ways in which quilts speak. One, through their formal qualities. Two, their use of fabric. And three, their social context. The discussion here is fo focused primarily on 19th century America, where quilts were an important historical documents that transmitted information about women and their lives that might not have been available through other means and that otherwise may well have been overlooked. Okay, while I'm reading this very interesting but visually super boring thing, let me pull up a quilt for you to look at. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I mean, that's the whole point. We are visual people. We are quilters. That is what we do. We do visual things. Oh, look at that. Okay. That would be a 19th century quilt. Victorian era crazy quilt, probably 1880s-ish. Okay. Quilts speak through their graphic wit. Ooh, I love that. Their use of formal elements and their makers were adept at manipulating shapes. Can we just put this in the present tense? Their makers are adept at manipulating shapes, colors, and patterns to achieve dazzling visual displays. 
fabric is also an essential element through, through which quilt makers expressed themselves. Okay. As well as providing the basic palette of a quilt, the fabric was significant in its own right in 19th century quilts as today, whether it was purchased new or it was recycled for its emotional, recycled for its emotional resonance. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to go toward. Uh, before we got on this. Additionally, although women made quilts, their significance often transcended the domestic realm. Finally, women used their quilts as a way of making utterances, whether to tell stories about the Bible, to collect images related to their lives, or to connect to other people, living or dead. The quilt aesthetic is still a thriving tradition, mm -hmm, and the transformative potential of using fragments to piece together a whole is especially relevant today. I don't know why that last sentence is there, but that's fine. That's fine. Looks like an amazing paper. Let's see how much it costs. <laughs> Get access. Ooh! Ooh! Whoa! This is what I'm talking about. Molly, you feel me on this? PDF download. So you get 48 hours to access the PDF in the online version. So you can't, you can buy the paper, you know, for 35 pounds, 35 GBP to USD, $48, $50, 50 bones. You can buy the whole issue, the journal in which it appears for 140 GBP, 140 GBP, $200, $200 to read it. It's a lot. And you know what? I'm telling you, I mean, it's kind of uncool. <laughs> it, I mean, it's really, I mean, look, look, this is a problem. And Molly, you definitely will have things to contribute about. I mean, not that you have to contribute. Oh, good. Molly can send it to me. Yes. Yes, yes. That's the thing. Okay, Pepper, you're saying what I was going to say. You know, s people who are academics, I never really understood, like, Sounds so ignorant, but, but I was ignorant. I was like, you know, academics, like scholars, you know, they work in a college, like, okay, well, you know, when you, when you really dive into some history stuff or, or you want to learn really, you know, a lot about one thing, it's like you go to JSTOR or you go to a site like Taylor and Francis, it just sounds fancy. Um, and, and you realize like, praise, praise these academics, you know, toiling away in libraries and universities, you know, working on some like obscure thing, like, oh, I don't know, like in quilting, what, what would it be like, um, you know, quilt techniques uh, in, well, yeah, I mean, in, you know, West Virginia in the night in, in 1887, you know, and it's like, whoa, that is really, that's really specific. You know, that's really for so many people in the world, it would just be so totally dull. But then when you, and, and like dull and like pointless, right? So many people would be like, oh, who cares? Who cares? But when you care about a thing and there's a paper and it's been like, you know, there's citations and it's been, you know, peer reviewed and all this. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> um, the, oh, Molly. Oh, you're good. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Molly, if you give this for me. So, so anyway, so I see you, SJ. You're amazing. So uh, I may have subscriptions. I'm, I'm going to develop a subscription thing. So if you want to pay like $4.99 or $9.99 or $24.99, these are the tiers for Twitch subscriptions. If you want to give some money to this scholar, at some point you will be able to do it and that would be great. But like, you know, when you get into excited about something, it's just so wonderful that, that people have been working so hard on, on a topic, on a thesis, you know, on a paper that they submitted to a journal that got published. It's, it's incredible. And so to pay that much money for this is like, oh my God, so bad. But then it's worth so much. My problem is who's getting paid, right? Like Taylor and Francis, does the, Molly, you may know, I'm leaning hard on you, Molly. I'm like, Molly knows everything. You can tell us. Maybe another person who's in the chat right now knows like, if you write a paper that's published in a journal, which journal was this published in? Um, journal, oh wait, oh wow, okay. Wow, interesting. So this is published in, why is it hard to tell? That's related, oh, oh, Women's History Review, okay. So it's it was published in this, that's cool, Women's History Review? 
I want to read Women's History Review. How cool is that? Publishes articles and viewpoints on women's history, furthering feminist knowledge and debate about women and or gender relations in various disciplines. Fascinating. I'm interested. Um, see, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, does the woman who, or the people who, I had no I. I have no idea who wrote this. Okay, I should not just say she, but Mara, Mara Witzling. She's not getting paid, is she? If I buy this article, there's got to be some contract somewhere, right? When they publish her piece in Women's History Review, I imagine that she gets some kind of, but just think about what Ms. Witzling gets if I buy this article. I mean, really? I, 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 ah, I wrote a book. Okay, sorry. That's Taylor and Francis, the ghost of Taylor and Francis taking their revenge. Um, you know, I wrote, I wrote a book of quilt patterns and what else have I written that I get royalties on? Oh, well, I had fabric, a fabric line for a hot second. Very few people are getting rich on books, man, or fabric. I mean, Tula Pink. You know, Tula has very beautiful handbags, right? And like, she's earned every single one of them. Tula Pink is amazing. And she makes, you know, a fine living from her fabric line and, and her books. I don't know. I'm trying to think who really makes money in the quilt world from books, but it's just not a lot of money. So I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine like that she's making much exactly. I have articles out there. Never seen a penny. Molly, what is your specialty, by the way? Very curious about you. Interested. Interested. Tell us all how you are, who you are. Tell us everything on the internet. <laughs> there won't be any trolls, you know, lurking. Who? It's so terrifying, isn't it? But um, it's interesting. What is your what is your um, area of specialty? I'm so mad that you've never seen a penny from something like this. Look at the work that ta it takes to do something like this. Look at this. She toiled for years, probably, right? Making this thing. Anyway, okay. I've gotten upset about scholarship. Oh, wait, no, I'm not done. One other thing, one other thing, one other thing. I need to drink some water and eat a chip. The other problem with this, there's the, there's the someone not making anything, the person who produced the content. Um, and then there's the barrier to entry for somebody who doesn't have that money. I mean, I don't have the money to spend for $35 for like, there's like at least 30 different papers on Taylor and Francis that I would love to read on related to quilting. And then there's other stuff that I like. I, I don't have that kind of money. Who has that kind of money? I guess maybe like the Carnegie Mellon Institute, who's going to give you a grant or give you a subscription to Taylor and Francis or something. But like, there's this ivory tower thing. I should give you another picture to look at. Um, this ivory tower of knowledge. I mean, if you're if you're a kid and you want to read stuff about quilts and stuff on Taylor and France, dream on, dream on. So there's this 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 like barrier to entry on just knowledge. It's really kind of a drag, you know. So it's very complicated. I want people to make money on their research, but I also just think, you know, ouch. All right. Molly wrote about how librarian, oh, thanks, Bip, about how librarianship is underfunded <laughs> and undervalued for such a trusted and valuable resource. The Twitch stream will keep going because it brings gifts, does it not? We're very, it's a very funny stream tonight. But you have tenure now. Oh, great. You got that tenure. Good girl. Good. Yes. Yes. Girl, it's awesome. I love that. You got tenure. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, so why are we looking at crazy quilts? What's going on? Oh yeah, universities pay huge licensing fees. That makes sense. Oh, this is a great crazy quilt. Oh, look at this one. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's just go to the Met. So we're gonna go over here. Hey, there's 25 people in the, in the, um, in the chat or in the Twitch stream. That's great. You know, last time um, there were 28 at one point, which is fantastic. I'm really, really excited with that, about that. Um, the Twitch stream numbers, they, they're going like this. <laughs> Do you see how it's very 
very slowly moving in the right direction. That's good. So I'm really glad. Welcome. If you haven't been here before now, I'm so glad you're here. We nerd out on quilts. That's what we do. That's what we do. Clearly we were nerding out on like scholarship, but I think everyone who's been here since the beginning can say that's like the first time that's happened, but that's, that was fun. I don't know. We talk about everything because quilts are a, op they open the door to the whole world. Everything, everything you want to know about, everything you want to learn about or talk about, quilts provide a way. You know, we just talked about the corrupt, broken academic system. We just had a nice conversation about that. And I got an email from someone who wants to give me a grant <laughs> and buy all the scholarly papers I want. Um, we just had that conversation about the state of like academic research. Why did, how did we get there? Quilts. And how are we going to get to the last thing that we're going to talk about tonight or the last thing I think I have on deck, at least right now, Saturday night. I mean, I'm having fun. Who knows? Um, we're going to talk about the environment. That's what we're going to talk about ultimately next, because I want to ask you all, Hey, Quilting Grandma 1991. Awesome. Oh, that's so great. That's so, so great. Welcome Quilting Grandma 1991. I'm so glad that you're here. Well, I want to ask you um, to think of, you don't have to chat if you don't want to. Nobody ever has to. You can lurk. That's okay. But um, maybe this is something that you will have thoughts on, or maybe your, your mother-in-law will have thoughts on this as well. So what do I mean about the environment and why are we looking at this crazy quilt? This is a crazy quilt at the Met Museum in New York City. Um, they don't have a lot of quilts at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, but they do have some. And this is one of them. Oh, and look at this. Speaking of public domain and access, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, not too long ago, they released a huge amount of their collection. Hold on. Uh, images of their collection to the public domain. So m much of what you'll find on metmuseum.org, if you search for quilt in metmuseum.org, which you certainly should, I'm going to pull this quilt back up in just a second. But if you go to metmuseum.org and you search quilt, which you should, um, 457 results for quilt, okay, on the Met Museum website. Um, I mean, we can, on some stream, we're just going to go to the Met together. That's what this show is all about. We just go and have fun wherever we, wherever we land, right? Um, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. But here, now I don't want to make you dizzy. I hate, I hate this. I hate this. Don't, don't look, look away because I have to scroll really quick. And sometimes it makes me kind of dizzy to do that. But here, okay, okay, okay. Here. Oh, oh, oh. This is one of my favorite quilts of all time. This is one of the most beautiful quilts ever of all time. The Branches and Vine quilt. <sighs> okay. This picture, to finish my thought before I geek out, nerd out on this quilt for a moment, is that, do you see this down here? Public domain, okay? So you can download this image and you can share it and you can copy it and you can take pieces of it, right? And make a quilt. Oh, I swear I'm gonna cry looking at this quilt. I love this quilt. So anyway, the Met Museum made a lot of their images public domain. So anytime you see this little, this little thing, that means that you can use that image wherever you want. I mean, it's far, okay, wait, wait, wait. Look at the look at the small print. Okay, look at the the details. Um, <laughs> don't like sell tote bags with that on it and tell them that I said it was okay. And then you know we all get sued. But um, actually, they do make tote bags with this quilt on them. I had one until I completely wore it out. This quilt is <sighs> what what do you want out of life? I mean, what, what do you want out of life? When I, when I was younger, growing up in a household with quilt, with quilts <coughs> everywhere, um, you know, they were fine. They were great. <coughs> I was into quilts. I was into chips. I still am. 
But quilts were something my mom did for work. Quilts were fine. They were great. They were beautiful. But it wasn't until I got older and saw things like this that I realized that having quilts in my life was this huge gift that I, it wasn't until I looked back at quilt history and looked at quilts that were completely out of my experience, right? My experience was mom made quilts, mom was on TV, then I was on TV with mom before I got into quilts the way I am now. And, you know, here in my middle age, right, turned 42, and it's like, am I doing what I need to be doing with my life, you know? is Was it right for me to go into the, the quilt thing, the family business? And we all have thoughts about like, you know, am I doing what I should be doing with my life? And like, you're not that important, Mary. Like, yes, you're doing fine. You know, don't worry about it so much. But when I see quilts like this, I just think what, how lucky I am, right? And how lucky you are to be able to see something. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. I mean, this quilt, look at these little animals. Oh, no, no, no. Look at these little animals. I'm going to try to, yeah, okay. This quilt was made by a person who was not a trained artist, as far as we know. We can read a little bit about her um, because we do know who made this. I think her name was Ernestine, so we can we can check and, and look. Uh, the Met does have some information about her. But any quilt that has little animals on it, I'm in love with that. Those little animals were cut out by hand with scissors you know look at this what is that thing anytime i see a quilt with an animal on it and i can't really tell if it's like a platypus or a giraffe or a cat i am i mean i just cannot i just love it so much you know because it's so whimsical and sweet this person made this quilt every piece cut out with scissors. There were no rotary cutters. There were no die cutters. Okay, forget it. It was hundred, a hundred years. Let's see if it was made in like 1880, you know, it was a hundred years before the rotary cutter would come out. And another, it was almost 150 years before we had die cutters, you know, to use for these little things. But the, the leaves, I mean, look at the, look at this. Well, so, I mean, the points, how, what, is that, is that embroidery? Like, how did she get these points on the leaves? I mean, I have little sticky uppy parts of things that I applique, but they're mistakes. They're like, I screwed up, you know? And so there's little crappy looking edges, but hers are just magnificent. And this, like the gesture, the gesture of this leaf, I keep zooming in and the picture is so good. We're still getting a really nice, a nice look at this quilt up close because the resolution of the photo is so good this the slope of this thing and that little the way it goes into that point it's just it's so good to get to get that have you done needle turned applique because it's all i want to do anymore i love it but a point like this forget it i can't do that I, not yet and i can't i cannot get a point that just slopes like that into this beautiful little this little this little thing, it's like a little pencil tip. Impossible and the, and the vines and everything. I mean, I could just look at it all day, obviously. And I have looked at it a lot. And look at this, this is interesting too. So these berries, let me zoom out because so, there's another piece of the quilt that is like this. Yeah, let's get back to the big thing. And like, what, like, what is that? Look at this thing. It's big too. We'll look at the dimensions of it in a second, but I don't, did she, did she have a pattern? I don't think she did. I mean, I know she, she, this is all original, right? She's just making this, but like, did she work from a drawing? Probably a little, maybe, but it looks like she maybe just, yeah, Carol, I think it did. It must've taken years. It must've, because she probably had other things to do, right? It wasn't just sitting around and sewing. Um, but to me, it seems like she just kind of like riffed, right? She just kind of like, followed her nose like the the center you know, is it a medallion quilt like I don't know I don't consider it one because it's just too freeform but there is this sort of tree of life right if Marianne was in here she would she would say ah tree of life 
just a few little animals down there. Is it the Garden of Eden? I don't know. But then she just kind of had fun with it. My God, I love it so much. Yeah. Yeah, Nancy. She had time to stitch and spent time in a garden. I mean, I love that. So these little berries here, some of you know a lot about quilts and many of you could tell me a whole lot of things that I do not know. So some of you may know that those berries were not originally that color and neither was this gold portion. Those, those little bits were not, um, or that wasn't, that's not the fabric color she chose. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's, that's a, a what you call it, a fugitive dye, the dye that was used it to make the fabric, you know, green, surely, at the time, um, it was fugitive. It, it was not color fast, it faded. And, and so you're left with that kind of strange yellowy beige color, which I actually don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind, but when you see a quilt, a lot of times, and over the course of these streams that we will be doing together, you know, we'll see, we'll see a lot of quilts that have kind of that color, like it's like red and this weird tan. And it usually, it often means if it's from a particular time period that it wasn't, wasn't that color at all. It was green or it was maybe black even. Um, yeah. So anyway, pretty good. So let's see, Myra. Okay, Myra has a question. Might have already been asked and answered. Perhaps I missed it. But my husband wishes to know what sort of chips you're eating. I was like, oh, is she going to ask me about fugitive dye? You know, I don't know. Um, I would be happy to answer. I am eating balsamic vinegar and salt. Um, kettle chips. I love salt and vinegar chips. I used to think that they were the grossest thing I had ever tasted. Why would you want to eat sour potato chips? <laughs> well, because they're great. And I also have a glass of wine. It's, a, it's almost midnight. I'm having so much fun. I don't think I can go yet. I try to keep these things about two hours, but we have to talk a little bit about the thing that I was saying before. <coughs> oh, wouldn't it be awful if I started coughing? I can't talk and eat. I better eat some, drink some wine. Okay. Salt and vinegar are so good, Dana. Oh, they're so delicious. Okay. No choking on a chip. That really would not be good. Okay. So before we were taken away by, yes, Ernestine, Ernestine Eberhardt Zomseel. Before we were taken away by her, we were going to talk about crazy quilts. But before we go, we need to know. Branches and Vines, it was made in 1875. Working in the later years of the 19th century, Ernestine Zomziel, get a close up here, mm, mm -mm, created this extraordinary quilt empl employing the tree of life pattern, a design that has been popular for use on bed covers since the 17th century. The first tree of life bed covers called Palampores, mm, go back and watch the stream I have to tell Marianne. Marianne, are you, you're not here. You, We would know if you were here. She was the one who said, when we were talking about medallion quilts and traditional quilts, she was like, she's the one who mentioned palimpours and we were talking about that central medallion being the tree of life. So here we have it. She was right, you know? The first tree of life bed covers called palimpours were of Indian origin and featured a stylized tree bearing fantastical fruits and flowers. An Indian palimpour makes up the central panel of quilt 2014.263 in the American Wings collection. Okay, they're talking about a different quilt. A little confusing, Met Museum. It's cool, no problem. Um, in Zomseel's, Zomseel's, yeah, quilt, the trees and branches are much more realistic, in part because she seems to have traced leaves from actual trees. Who said this? Who said garden? Nancy? Nancy. She seems to have traced leaves from actual trees and vines to serve as patterns for her applique designs. I am dead. Of course she did. Ugh! Could you die? I mean, think of that. Think of going out into the garden or going out into the yard or going out to the park and finding a beautiful leaf and being like, that's the leaf. 
that's the leaf I want to use. That's the leaf that I'm going to use in my quilt. And then you take it home and trace it and then execute it beautifully, brilliantly in your, in your fabric. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So quilts win, man. If you're here and you're like, why am I watching this quilt program? Well, you're not asking that now because you're like, now I know. I stumbled upon this quilt program <laughs> and now I realize I need quilts in my life because that's amazing. So, you're welcome. Thank the people in the chat. Couldn't do this without them. All right. Now, Mary, for heaven's sakes, what were you on about? So, okay, hang on. So crazy quilts, that's a whole stream. We'll go there. But my, my thought about this, who, who, what, what happened? Oh yeah. We were reading about quilt kits and something that, that Judy, I think was saying, who was right, who wrote that bit about, um, about quilt kits said something about recycled fabrics. I forget in what context, you know, what, she, what point she was making about that, but she said the word recycled fabrics. And it made me think about my theory that I think quilts are about to get really scrappy and complicated like crazy quilts were. And the reason that I think that is because of the environment. There, the earth is, is groaning a little, don't you think? That's a way to put it. Um, you know, um, it's freaky. You know, I, I keep thinking the, these extreme weather events, it's like, it's kind of like squeezing a balloon. Like, the, you know, if there's a really big fire, well, that's going to push some air, you know, over here in this area of the world that's not used to that hot air. And so then it's going to do something and then like maybe melt a thing. And then there's water that's going to come over here and that area of the world isn't used to all that water. And so then there's going to be a swamp. And, you know, I mean, it's like, it's really scary because it's kind of a, you know, a vicious cycle, right? It's just scary that it, yeah. So it's very, it's overwhelming to think about these things. I, sometimes when climate change, uh, extreme weather event stuff comes on the news, I mean, I, I admit, I don't know. I admit, I'm not going to hide. I can't listen to it. I can't listen to it because I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I feel hopeless. I feel helpless. I feel afraid. I feel guilty. And it's just really overwhelming. And I, and I just, sometimes I just can't, like I see, you know, a polar bear or something and I'm like, I can't, I, Eric, turn it off. I can't do it. I don't know if that's putting my head in the sand or if that's just me being a human being overloaded with, you know, compassion fatigue or something. I don't know. It's probably a really privileged thing to say. I don't even know. My point is that as a quilt maker, you know, um, is it, is it, you know, would it be good for me to, would it be good for me to use more upcycled materials? I, I don't know. And I, I have to be careful too, because I want everyone to buy the fabric and come to the shows and, you know, do all this stuff. But it is fair to say that quilt making, um, um, oh yeah. Oh, Palampore, Myra, you got to watch that other stream. It's all, we talk all about it. The four genres of quilts. Anyway, so, so I, I just, I want, I want the quilt industry to be, you know, full and, and, and abundant and I love fabric and, and I want to buy fabric. If I had the chance to buy some fabric right now, it would be really hard for me not to do it because I, I'm working on a quilt and I really, I really want certain fabric. But, you know, I think about like, there's a lot of fabric out there and like, I really love shirting prints and I really love, you know, I'm a pre-washer. So I wash all my fabric that I bring in to the house for a quilt. And so I think about like, well, I could go to, a, you know, a thrift store, Salvation Army kind of place or in, on brick in Brick Lane, the Brick Lane area here in London uh, on the East end. Um, they have these, you know, markets and, there's this one uh, near Brick Lane. I went to go find it and it wasn't there a couple Saturdays ago, but they sell sh shirts and pants and stuff. You know, it's like secondhand stuff for a, a, a buck, you know, a pound for a couple things. And I was like, maybe I need to go into a, a time, a phase where I use 
recycled materials in my quilt because maybe in this small, pointless way, I know it doesn't make a difference, right? Does it make a difference in the environment if one quilt maker decides to use fabric that's already been manufactured years ago instead of buying, you know, new fabric that buys into a system that produces fabric, 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 and maybe hurts the environment, you know, does it make sense? And, and I think there's, there's like an appeal to using reclaimed materials, maybe for a while, just to see what kinds of quilts I make, you know, that sounds kind of fun. And of course, you know, just as with the crazy quilt, you have to stabilize, you know, if you're, if you're combining different kinds of fabrics, if you're using silk, and cotton and polyester, you know, in one quilt, you have to do a lot to stabilize the different substrates, you know, to make them sew together in a sane way. Otherwise you'll have a big mess because there's different weaves and and all that. So I know that, but if it was all 100% cotton that I was sourcing and cutting up and sewing together, maybe it would be really cool. But, so what does this have to do with crazy quilts? Well, when you have a lot of fabric, yeah, when you have a lot of fabric, um, let me put it this way, when you have access to a lot of fabric, um, and fabric is abundant and like cheap enough, relatively speaking, okay, it's a complicated thing, but y you can you can afford to buy, say, like six yards of that one cotton and steel print that you want for your quilt, right? If you, if you are a person who can say, I want six yards, that's a lot, but I want six yards of that print, please. What that means is that there's six yards available of one print that you can afford to buy it, which, you know, this is all relative, but you, I think I'm making my point that there's so much fabric around and it's, it's affordable enough. It's not like chintz, you know, in the 1700s. If today in 2021, you can like say, okay, I'm gonna make this quilt here's my budget, I'm gonna get six yards of that particular cotton and steel print, and I'm gonna make my quilt using that and that blue. It's gonna be a two-tone quilt and I'm gonna make it and it's gonna be amazing. You can make a really, you know, simple quilt with lots of fabric, you know, um, lots of one kind of fabric if there's a lot of it. Okay. But if, you, if you're making a quilt with reclaimed materials, if you're going to a thrift store or you're going to a Salvation Army and you're getting old men's, old men's shirts, old shirts that were men's shirts or whatever, you know what I mean? You're not going to get six yards of anything, any one thing. You're going to, you can get six yards, but you're not going to get six yards of one material. You're going to have to cut up all of those shirts to get enough fabric to make your quilt. So you can't have a two fabric quilt if you're going to be using recycled materials. I think that if more people do what I'm thinking about doing, that I'm kind of like ready to do, to use more recycled materials, to reuse, reduce, recycle, that kind of thing, to help the environment, because we're thinking about the environment, whatever. If more people do that, quilts are gonna look more like this soon enough. This is my theory. This is my, this is just something that I've been thinking about because there's no way that you can make a quilt. Well, let me look, let me just think about a quilt that would be, let me think here. Um, let's see. I'm just thinking about modern quilt. Let's see, modern quilt. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's see. Oh, look, I press my button. Look at this, look. If you're, if you're new here, I have to show off my little button thing. This is like a Twitch thing. If you're a Twitch streamer, you can get this button thing. My husband got it for me. And then I push this button for the International Quilt Museum. Watch, watch the screen, watch. And it pulls up that page. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see, we looked at Pauline Burbage the other day. Let me find... Um, I don't know if this is gonna be the right example or not. But yeah, okay, let's just take, let's just look at this. 
I mean, this is a quilt that has just a few fabrics in it, right? So she made this at a time. When did she make this? It would have been in 1986. There's more fabric available now than there was back then, but she made this quilt using just a couple fabrics. And, and you know, if you only, if you know, you have to have enough of that chicken <laughs> to make this quilt. You know what I'm saying? So I think if, if, if it happens that more people, maybe newer quilters, younger quilters who are thinking, you know, not that all people don't think, you know, a lot of people in every age group think about the environment. Some people don't, aren't concerned about it. I don't know how you feel about it, whatever. But I think, you know, when I see the youth quilts at like QuiltCon or I was at the Birmingham Quilt Show here in, in uh, England not too long ago, there's always a youth category. And I'm telling you, every, almost every single youth category quilt show I see, 75% of the quilts that the kids make, it's about the earth. It's about the environment. I'm telling you, it, it's so sad. I mean, like every quilt, I swear, like there's like a, a, a globe that's crying, like in fabric. It's crazy. It's terrible. So maybe, you know, quilters who, who are making their first quilts now are like, I'm not going to buy fabric and I can't afford it anyway because it's super expensive. Um, and yeah, I mean like, um, oh wait, oh wait. So we have somebody here in the chat. Hey, Echo Laser. So I don't want to block you because I don't, I don't want to block you, but you have to talk about quilts and you have to, well, I don't know. You don't me, 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 me. recommend a song for the back. I think I have to block you. I think I'm not good enough. I'm so sorry. I'm going to block you just because I, um, you know, oh no, we don't want to click on you. That's not, that's not what you want. That's not what we want. Um, I'm sorry. I have to block you, but I, I just have to, because I don't know how else to deal with you. Sorry. Anyway, I think people might make quilts with more fabrics. And if they make them with more fabrics, they're gonna look like crazy quilts. I think we're going to um, see this. That's that's it. What do you think about that? Do you think that that's true? Because I mean, and what's crazy about it is like, look at the modern quilts. Modern quilts are the opposite. I think that's the most important thing to say is that modern quilts are the opposite of crazy quilts. The modern quilt style look I mean, compare that, I'm gonna exit full screen here. Compare that quilt to, to Miss Crazy here. I mean, they're just, they're so, sorry, sorry. They're so different. And you're looking at, where'd you go? Here you go. Oh yeah, here, here you are. No, 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 no. You're looking at quilts that are, you know, are made from very, at very different times in history, right? Obviously. And here on the left, you know, we have a quilt that has just very, very few fabrics in it. Like one, two, three. I mean, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to, Kona, do you know Kona has like 336 different solid fabrics? There's one, two, three four it's a beautiful quilt five six I might have counted that seven eight nine ten eleven twelve with the white 13 I mean 15 ish right um <laughs> it is like an AOL chat room of the mid 90s I love it chaos <laughs> chaos I remember those chat rooms barely I was barely old enough. We weren't allowed to go into many chat rooms, but I remember the dial-up modem, modem that happened before they began. Neener, neener. So, I don't know. Am I making sense? Do you feel me? The more reclaimed materials you use, if you're getting it from thrift stores and shirts and old dresses and stuff, you don't have enough of any one fabric to do like a, um, a graduated or a, an ombre quilt, 
with with all solids probably you know or, or maybe you do but it's just it's changing i think it's going to change so exactly natalie these are all coordinated fabrics you would never be able to create them from recycled fabric it just wouldn't look like that it couldn't look like that it just couldn't right Rhonda says yes absolutely good Rhonda i think you're you're picking up what i'm putting down here susan i have some former clothing fabric in the quilts i make but not as the fabric there you go not as the focus fabric i do use all the fabric down to the scant too small for a seam allowance though interesting i am a scrap quilter for sure same i've said it before but it's the coolest thing i ever heard i did not make it up but i'll say it. if it's scrappy i'm happy isn't it great i think you're the same as me um old sheets are no good the weave is too tight does anybody know geez ben quilts oh yeah oh yeah um molly i have thoughts on that but i'll let the chat i, I don't want to we have a very wise chat so if anybody wants to answer molly's question about old sheets and things throw your thoughts in there oh y'all it's 12 15. i'm gonna i'm we're gonna we're gonna wind it wind it up a little bit here i'm going to um have a little sip here see my wine's almost gone it's like the the hourglass you know <laughs> when the wine is gone <laughs> it's time to go right i'm just having too much fun okay so we went over kits um no what did we start with we started with the bronte quilt we started with the bronte quilt let's take another look the bronte sisters emily bronte charlotte bronte made a quilt that's a that's a close-up of one of their of corner there the brontes the brontes the ones who made you know made history right the, these these famous famous sisters um they made a quilt and we're gonna do a workshop on it um at quilt folk with with quilt folk it's online it's super cool go to quiltfolk.com and sign up for this online workshop it's me and jenny smith for sure watch the replay of this stream if you came in later at the very top of the show i talk all about this workshop it happens october 16th and 17th online it is going to be very cool we're going to talk about the brontes and i'm going to go to the moors because i'm here in england in london and i can go to the moors and walk along the moors and you can come with us and we'll teach me and jenny smith will teach some of this quilt um so we talked about the brontes we talked about kit quilts a little I had a conflict of, you know, purpose. It was exciting for everyone, I'm sure. Um, and then we went into we went into the Ernestine's quilt, the the leaves and vines. Oh, and let me show you this. Met Museum Leaves and Vines Quilt Tote. Do they still sell it? Do they? Yeah, well look, I bought this obviously <laughs> when i was at the met or maybe i got it online but look at that oh that's on pinterest do they still sell it oh no i don't know i see it on amazon they had a scarf too y'all anyway we looked let's go let's go let's look let's look they had a scarf i think they had a little notebook a little notebook oh diobeb hi you know, Diobeb, welcome. I think she's new. I think you're new. Or he, or you, whoever you are. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here, and I hope you come back. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Central, 5 p.m. UK time, I'm streaming. All my old, all the old streams, I should say the, the prior streams, are here on the Twitch channel, and they're also on YouTube. They're all going up on YouTube. There's a bunch of them there now. Um, if you hit follow that would be great and if you hit notify or notifications you'll get a little notification on your phone or whatnot every time i go live because i go i've been going live twice a week for sure on tuesdays and thursdays but like right now i've been going live in, at other times because i love it and also it's good to see like what times are good for people what times make sense but tuesdays and thursdays we're all here and um and yeah it's just I don't know this is what it's like we just look at stuff that's cool and it looks like this is unavailable it looks like it's unavailable man it was great it was a great tote bag um 
target threshold quilts. Lovely, top of the line. Nice, nice. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about sheets. Yeah. I will say about this tote bag, um, you know, the, the leather, it was, it was not real leather. It was, you know, plasticky stuff, I think. Yeah, it, it fell apart. It fell apart pretty quickly. And it's white. I mean, you can imagine. A city girl like myself carrying that around, it got pretty dingy pretty, pretty quickly. But it was, it was nice while it lasted. Okay, everybody, I'm so glad that you came. I hope that you'll join me again on Tuesday, if not before, probably Tuesday, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. Um, it's just the best. It's just my favorite thing. And it's because they, it's because you're there. So thank you for coming. Thank you for participating in the chat. Um, the last homely house, I'm making a note. So Natalie, yeah, Molly, I knew you meant sheets too. Um, last homely house. I'm writing it down. We're going to take a look. Thank you all. Have a great evening or day and tell somebody who you think might like it. That's, that's the way this is going to happen. Okay. That's it. Where's my thing? It's right here. Stop streaming. I'm going to press it right now.